Today, maxed out, financial stress mapping. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and Elite. It's one of those posts covering finance and property news. Well, this is the last in my series of posts where we cover the mapping for default risk, rental stress, and investor stress. And today we are doing the financial stress mapping. And just to remind you, of course, that we define stress in cash flow for terms, money in, money out. If households have more outgoings, it's one of discretionary items of income, we define them as stressed. And we aggregate the data to estimate the total financial stress. So it's the sum of mortgage stress, rental stress, and investor stress. And this was the summary that we published last week that showed overall financial stress at 48.17% of all households. And that translates to about 4.68 million households in financial stress. And that means they've got mortgage stress or rental stress and or investor stress. So we aggregate it to the financial stress metric. And I would highlight here that whilst young growing families are right at the top at 68%, we also do see other segments as well from the battling urban disadvantaged fringe right the way through to the multicultural establishment. They're the first generation migrants and the young affluents. So it is widely spread. Financial stress does not just hit young growing families. There are other families of various sorts and sizes across the country also feeling it at the moment. Now, here is the summation of our financial stress. And you can see here that Liverpool 2170 comes out on top with around 74% of households and 28,000 in financial stress. Then we go to Toowoomba 4350 with 27,200 in stress. That's 57%. Then Campbelltown, the New South Wales 2560 with 22,000 or 77% of households. Then we go to Hoppers Crossing and Tarnit in Victoria, 3029 with 21,000. Durhamunk, Point Cook and Werribee, 3030, 19,100. And then Cranbourne in Victoria, 3977. Then Craigie Byrne and Donnybrook, 3064. And then the centre of Melbourne. All of those areas are high growth corridors. And of course, a lot of relatively new people bought. And in the centre of Melbourne, it's predominated by those in rental stress. Ballarat stands out next at 3350 with 17,200 or 62% of households in difficulty. Then Mount Druitt and Mitchambury in postcode 2770 with 16,700. Then we go to Sampson in Western Australia at 16,700. And Wentworthville in New South Wales, 2145 at 16,600. Then Ipswich in Queensland, 4305 with 15,900 or 62% of households. And Blacktown with 65% of households or 15,386, postcode 2148. Then Campbelltown, 2570 at 71% or 15,200. Southport in Queensland, postcode 4215 with 15,171. And finally, Wanneroo, postcode 6065 at 62% or 15,065 households. So now let's look at the detailed information. Here is the financial stress map for the Sydney CBD and beyond. You can see that the Blacktown and 2170 stands out as highlighted before. And no surprise there that a lot of the pressure is in the West, but look at 2017, for example, and other areas in and around Sydney as well. So it's not just the West that are actually being impacted at the moment. And the yellows show that across the greater Sydney region, there are quite a few households in difficulty. If I look then at the story further out, you can see here that Campbelltown stands out as well, and Camden, Blacktown are those areas too. So once again, as you pull out, you can see that things are pretty bad towards the west. If I look at the centre of Melbourne, you can see there that 3029 really jumps out as a hot spot, as does a few other areas too. And if you pull out further, you can see there that 3805, 3810, 3977, 3199, 3030, 3064, 3029 and Ballarat all jump out. So there's this ring of fire 
around the centre of Melbourne. If we go to Brisbane, you can see that the Toowoomba stands out at 4350, and also to the south and to the north of Brisbane, and also Ipswich, 4305, 4300, and 4209. The county is lower as you go to the north and south, but remember that the population density is also lower relative to Victoria. Over in Adelaide, not too much to see. We do have a certain amount of stress here, but it's not so high as we saw in some of the other states. In the west, in Perth, we do see significant issues, 6164, and then up to the north, and also down south too. And the stress pockets are quite significant over in the west. Hobart shows significant trends too. Remember the population density is lower, but we do see in and around the centre of Hobart, 7,000, 7,009 and 10 are where quite a few of the issues are. But again, overall, the counts are relatively lower because of the lower population density. Finally, the ACT, which shows us that in the urban area around the centre of the ACT, there is a considerable amount of pressure at the moment, and that pressure is not going away. So standing back, what does this tell us? Well, it shows that there are significant pressures across Australia at the moment from many households. Cash flow pressure is a problem. Interest rates are staying high for longer, and incomes are still not growing in real terms for many people. It's quite likely that we're going to be in this state for quite some time. Again, my scenarios show that this could play out in multiple ways. It's worth highlighting, of course, that the scenarios are not forecast. They are essentially ways of trying to get at what's going on. And we do have those three scenarios, the best case, the base case, which is the one I use for my modeling, and the worst case, the nightmare scenario. I fear that the soft landing story is a little less likely than previously to play out because the RBA probably hasn't done enough, but we'll see. The bottom line is, People are significantly under financial pressure. If you have a mortgage, talk to your bank. They have an obligation to help. And I also think it's useful to remember that there are debt counsellors who can assist if you have significant pressures. Uh, be careful, though. Don't just Google um, for help because you'll end up probably being charged for help that is available elsewhere free. And I will make the point that the debt helpline 1-800-007-007 is the government-backed helpline. They're very busy, of course, but they're worth approaching. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this series on mapping our stress modeling. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And check back next month. I'll be running another show second week in November when I update the data for October. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.